Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Joining me now is Nick Saplina, Senior Vice President at Everytown for Gun Safety. Nick, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. It's a pretty big day today. Today on Friday, the Supreme Court reversed the Trump era bump stock ban. So first, to get into the conversation, can you explain what a bump stock is and the potential it has to make a weapon more dangerous? Sure. Well, a bump stock is an accessory, really a, an addition that you would add to the back of a rifle. And what it does is it uses the recoil of a rifle to push the front of the gun, the rifle, forward. What the effect is, is basically the ability to turn a, a semi-automatic rifle into what fires like a machine gun, firing dozens and dozens of rounds in just a few seconds. Um, the deadliness uh, speaks for itself. We saw the worst mass shooting in U.S. history in Las Vegas, where 60 people were killed and over 400 were injured. And the gunmen in that case used uh, several rifles equipped with bump stocks uh, to, uh, uh, you know, undertake that shooting. Um, so they're very, very uh, dangerous in that respect. Um, machine guns have long been heavily regulated, if not outright banned in this country. And, and bump stocks are really a workaround to, uh, by the gun industry to try to get automatic uh, fire weapons back on, on the street. And that Las Vegas shooting that you're referring to was in 2017. It was at a concert, like you said, the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. And that really was the impetus for the Trump administration to ban bump stocks. What is your reaction to the decision today? Well, it's really disappointing. You know, the Supreme Court had an opportunity to correct uh, the decision below, uh, but it didn't. And it really, once again, I unfortunately showed its political side. I think uh, it was clear to us that the rule in question here um, really captured both the letter and the spirit of the congressional intent. As I mentioned, Congress has long said machine guns don't have a place in civilian hands. And that's what this rule did. Uh, it applied it to bump stocks. But the, the Supreme Court has now put uh, these weapons back on the street. And I think we're less safe for it. I want to read in part Justice Clarence Thomas penned the majority opinion and he wrote this quote a bump stock does not convert a semi-automatic rifle into a machine gun any more than a shooter with a lightning fast trigger finger does what's your response to his take there uh well Justice Thomas is wrong uh no human can uh pull a trigger as fast as as a bump stock can when when uh um, use there. There was some evidence in the court below that showed exactly that fact. So unfortunately, he's wrong. And, and once you're talking about coupling a bump stock with, let's say, a large capacity magazine, uh, you have real deadly power in your hands. Um, this this isn't um, that's not all that relevant to the outcome of the case. But you're right to point out that that seemed to be driving some of his thinking on this and some of the court's thinking on this. And it, and it just isn't isn't the case. Uh, a very fast trigger pull cannot really approximate automatic weapon fire, but a bump stock can. I want to talk about where we are right now as a country. I mean, the kids from Sandy Hook just graduated high school. The impetus of this ban was the largest mass shooting in the history of this country. You and I talked about a mass shooting back in October, and I had to look at what specific mass shooting that was, because since then there have been hundreds. So you're saying that this is making the country less safe. What do you think the implications here are for, for the gun safety fight? Well, look, I think this was a narrow decision on bump stocks. I think uh, Congress has bills in front of it that could take care of bump stocks tomorrow. And the American people don't want bump stocks. This is a small portion of the gun industry that likes to sell these things. So I think they should take it, uh, action. I think the president would sign that bill. But you're right to ask the, the larger question, right? Where does this lead us? I think we do have a Supreme Court that seems very ready, willing, and able uh, to get involved uh, on gun cases and to sometimes uh, issue rulings that seem more political uh, than based on, on the facts or, or the law. So that gives us some pause. But I think, you know, the fact is, is that the gun safety uh, movement, the infrastructure, the actions from the Biden administration all still 
accumulate to a point where we are stronger and in a stronger position to do more good than ever before, even though it feels like progress just is not happening at the rate that we deserve, which is undeniably true. Um, but you know what I see from my perch, uh, and what I'd love to share, what I love to share with people is, you know, we're active in all 50 states. We're beating a lot of bad gun laws. We're advancing a lot of creative new gun laws. And in the executive branch of government in particular at the federal level, but also as recently as 2022 in Congress, uh, we saw real action uh, on gun safety. That gives me some hope that we can uh, fix this persistent problem. That's a really optimistic note to end on right there. So I want to dive a little further into that because you're you're part of a gun violence prevention organization, the largest in the country. So what with that perspective, what else can you add to this conversation? What are those creative gun laws that you're referring to? Well, look, let's let's first start with um, what the Biden administration has done, right? Because we've had a gridlock Congress. As I mentioned, we had, you know, bipartisan legislation in 2022. It was a compromise bill, but it was really profound. And two years later, we're seeing uh, the effects of that law. We're seeing on homicide rates um, dropping precipitously year over year. We're seeing uh, some of the background check provisions uh, in that bill um, being used to stop uh, buyers under 21 from buying assault rifles, which means it's working. Um, we're seeing uh, evidence from that bill that it is working and that it is helping to reduce gun violence. The Biden administration has started an Office of Gun Violence Prevention, which has really focused the executive branches of government uh, on reducing gun violence. And, and that looks different depending on, on what agency you're talking about. But we've got the VA talking about uh, gun storage and, and uh, preventing veteran suicide. We have the Commerce Department saying, now hold on, we can't keep exporting our gun violence problem to other countries. We need better uh, rules and regulations in place. Um, and I, I honestly really could go on uh, uh, because there has been so much action there. It's creative, it's constitutional, it's effective, um, and so we like to see it. We like to see more of it. But across the country, um, I also see real examples of creativity uh, and uh, reasons for hope, reasons for optimism. And I think nowhere is that more true than the progress we've made uh, with respect to holding the gun industry accountable. You know, uh, I think it's particularly relevant for your audience. This is a business. Um, this is a business that is making money off of a national public health emergency. Uh, and we often don't talk about how that business um, is really making things worse when responsible business practices could be making it better. Well, we've passed laws now uh, in several states that open the door to holding the gun industry accountable where it acts recklessly, um, where it's marketing recklessly, where it is putting uh, guns on the street that are um, easy to turn into uh, machine guns and the like. And we're seeing uh, momentum pick up on that. And I hope the industry takes notice because they don't need to be told by laws or regulations or anything how to behave responsibly, that they could make some of these choices tomorrow. Um, and so we hope that these rules and regulations and the, the, the American people really convince them that that's the right thing to do. President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris were not happy about the Supreme Court decision. And President Biden said this in part, quote, I call on Congress to ban bump stocks, pass an assault weapon ban and take action to save lives. Send me a bill and I will sign it immediately. Do you see that happening? What's the likelihood that these bump stocks will be banned through congressional action? Well, I can tell you that the uh, that it should be incredibly likely because there are not a whole lot of constituents out there uh, fighting hard for the preservation of bump stocks. But let's be real. Uh, we're in an election year. There are many folks, especially on the Republican side, that do not want to take uh, action on guns. They see it as a political liability, even though uh, their constituents might want real action. Um, you know, a great quote, by the way, from the 2022 fight uh, over the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. This was in, inside a session of Republican senators, and one of them stood up and said, why are you bringing this bill forward? If I vote for it, the gun lobby is going to come for me. And if I vote against it, I'm going to disappoint all my constituents. Right. This is where we're at now. So I think a bump stock ban should pass Congress. It should sail through. It should be law uh, tomorrow. 
Whether that happens in 2024, uh, given the politics of our country, is, is another thing altogether. And so then when it comes to your organization, Every Town, what are you guys doing in light of this news? Well, listen, we never stop working uh, to try to, you know, keep the country safe from from gun violence, protect against gun violence. I've mentioned some of the, the work across the country, but more specifically, look, the, the main message out of this uh, Supreme Court ruling is this court, uh, as it's currently composed, uh, is not a, a friend to gun safety. Um, and so really all eyes are on the election, are on, um, you know, preserving the Biden administration's uh, historic run as the best gun sense uh, administration in history, um, and maybe uh, getting a, a Senate that can overcome some of the some of the blocks uh, uh, to legislation in the past, and, and and a House that will be a gun sense majority as well. I mean, there are political solutions here. If you want Congress to pass laws like a bump stock ban or other, uh, you know, simple common sense laws, we're going to need to change the composition to do so. Nick Saplina, I appreciate the conversation today. You're welcome back anytime. Thanks so much for having me back.